All right, it's been a minute, and uh, I have new, some new um, air quality monitors. This one is the Atmo Cube. So here's what the box looks like. Um, the monitor itself looks like this, so a little bit different than uh, others. It's got carbon dioxide, particulate matter 1, 2.5, and 10, TVOCs for maldehyde temperature, relative humidity, uh, pressure, ambient light intensity, and uh, noise. So there's a whole bunch of sensors in it. Um, the box itself came with that monitor, um, got a little cable for it, and some mounting brackets. Uh, there's a QR code in here also with a ID. And um, I think there's a quick start guide around here somewhere. Yeah, there's a little paper. So um, you scan this QR code and it takes you to the manual, which I will use to uh, set it up. So we'll see how this thing goes. All right, a couple other things to mention. The, uh, the setup card is actually also um, a wall template. So if you're hanging it on the wall, that's nice. Um, and then I discovered looking at the back of this, there's a couple different ways to power it. Um, the cord, it comes with is a USB-C cord. Um, it has a USB-A on this side, but did not appear to come with a power um, adapter thingy. So I'll have to find one of those to plug it in. Um, you could also hardwire it. There's a little plate on the back that slides over here. Um, but then otherwise USB-C plugs in, yeah, into here. Okay, so now I got the uh, business app going on my phone. And this deal, uh, lights have started blinking on it. The TVOC is red. I just read it says it takes uh, some amount of time, three minutes, three days. Uh, three days for, to calibrate and... Uh, um, get itself figured out. So right now it's telling me my TVOCs are high, but according to all the other sensors, uh, it's not, it's not right now. So, um, see what else we got here. You can name, name the, the network. And then I got the device ID, click done, uh, save Wi-Fi password for the next Atmo cube. No, I'm not going to do that. And then, uh, it's, network icon blinks blue. Yeah, I think it did that. So I think now we're connected. So getting it on the Wi-Fi was so easy that I, I don't think I realized I did it. It just kind of happened. And then I don't, I don't think it gave me a hooray, good job message. But um, yeah, I think it's, it's online now. It's on the dashboard. I see online. Um, you can mount it on the wall or the installation instructions say you can set it down you know, on a desk flat, which is kind of a bummer because then you can't see the lights. Um, all these different, these um, are going to be color coded. Like red is unhealthy, yellow is medium, green is good. And, and that's kind of reflective in the app too. So um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. And so I'll, I'll just set it like this um, on my desk with the other sensors and we'll see how it goes. So here is the dashboard on the app version. Everything's reflective of the parameters being measured. And what I really like is it has these little explanations and ranges um, of what's good to bad for all the different parameters that it's measuring and why, which I think uh, is always helpful for both uh, non-practitioners and practitioners alike, actually. Um, to give some context for why are we measuring these things and what are the normal ranges that we would uh, expect them to be seen in. So that's a useful feature uh, of the app as well as, uh, as I mentioned, looking at individual devices uh, via Bluetooth per this main screen here. Uh, another interesting thing about this monitor is that um, it is kind of modular in design in terms of the sensors. So you can add uh, carbon monoxide, ozone, nitrogen dioxide. I'm especially interested uh, to have the formaldehyde sensor in here now, since I am literally doing testing uh, here in the office on our um, handheld formaldehyde detector. So that'll be nice to look at side by side. Um, yeah, and it, you know, it can 
also an interesting thing, it's kind of continuously transmitting on Bluetooth. So if you have the consumer version of the app, you can um, walk up to any of them supposedly and, and check what's going on, maybe without even scanning a QR code, which is kind of cool too. Um, so yeah, that's what's up with the Atmo Cube. And uh, next we're going to look at the portable version. Um, this is the Atmo Tube Pro. It does not have a CO2 sensor, which I'm a little bummed about. Um, but it does monitor um, other things like TVOCs and um, particulate matter continuously and gives you a little LED indicator for that. And there is an app for that too. It does do three um, PM range, one, 2.5 and 10, as well as atmospheric pressure, temperature, and humidity. Um, so if it just had a CO2 sensor, I'd be totally set. Um, maybe the next version will. But uh, yeah, that's that's the portable version. So I'm looking forward to trying this out as well. So just like the Atmo Cube, the Atmo Tube has its own app. And I got to start with the firmware update here. But essentially, it shows you a, an aggregate air quality score and then uh, gives you additional information on the metrics that it's uh, using to calculate those. This is the first time I plugged it in. So then it's, it's doing some calibration as well. Um, but there's really three apps in all. There's Atmo Tube, Atmo Cube Business, which you use to set up the Atmo Cube, and then the Atmo Cube app itself. Um, everything was really app driven in the setup of both of these and um, really intuitive, which I thought was good. A um, little bit more here on this one. If you scroll down, there's plenty of information uh, in this. It's really made for uh, consumer air quality monitoring gives you recommendations and a little smiley face feedback on how you're feeling. Plus you can read up on all the additional information on the metrics there. Uh, final thoughts on Atmo cube, um, which uh, I got here. So I, this one's up and running now. You can see I got uh, colored indicator lights on they're color coded. Everything's good except humidity right now, which cause it's, you know, getting to be winter in Nebraska. Um, is yellow. Otherwise you can push this button and turn those off except for the power, I guess. Uh, I don't, I don't get why this is white with this power cord. I don't know why this is like an OCD thing for me, but, um, they, they don't, they do not come with a power adapter unless you're doing like a volume order, then they can include that. Um, so I had to order one of those to plug it into my, uh, air quality power strip. And um, I did ask uh, too about the Atmo tube and why there was not a CO2 sensor in here because I was bummed about that. Um, but it just didn't work with the form factor of the device apparently. So um, more to come on these two devices. I think um, optional sensors, you can get uh, carbon monoxide, you can get um, ozone and uh, the price depends on the order volume of those. So. Um, it's a neat device. And, and one more thing I think um, pending f more information is kind of the customization option on these color plates uh, to get it to look how you prefer. I don't remember if I mentioned this already, but in terms of uh, desktop mounting, since the air intakes are all around the sides here, you can't really set it up like this. So it's kind of been sitting um, flat like this on my desk. Um, which is fine, I suppose, uh, but it does have uh, wall mount capability, which is probably how you'd prefer to deal with this. So that's it, uh, Atmo Cube, Atmo Tube Pro. And um, yeah, there's an online dashboard with this as well. And we're gonna incorporate this into our ongoing testing. Thanks.